Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. I'm back with a little more shine today. I recently shared a video of my very first stab at playing with Yuli watercolors. It was super fun to do it on black cardstock. So today I'm gonna show you what it looks like on white, but I'm just gonna use a little dot card. These are a really affordable way to give these watercolors a try. So today I'm sharing a cute little narwhal. I think it turned out, eh, it's not ugly. And I hope it inspires you to check out metallic watercolor paints because if I can use them, trust me, anyone can. That video is coming up next. So here's the stamp set I'm going to use today. This is a set called Narwhal Friends. I love this little set. There are coordinating dies to cut out the little cuties. And I've done other cards with this. I'll link to one of them in the upper right here. Today though, I am going to work with this tiny little dot card from Yuli Watercolors. And I wanted to try just doing something with one of these smaller dot cards because these are super affordable if you wanna try out these fancy shimmery watercolors. And I saw all of these blue ocean tones and I thought it will look cute with that. Also today, I'm going to use some white watercolor paper. Now this is the Tim Holtz Distress watercolor cardstock. There's a smooth side and there's a nubby side. And I love this because it's so bright white. And I don't know what these will look like on, on the white. So we'll try that. I've got some VersaFine, which you can stamp and then paint and it will be fine with the images and a couple different sizes of brushes. Plus there'll be a few other things as we go. So let's get started. Before I get started with my stamping, I'm gonna use this little friend and I'll show you how I like to do this just so that I can pop a magnet down. This is so when I pick up paint, this little card won't move around. And so what I will do here is I'm gonna take out my little pipette, get a tiny bit of water. I'm just gonna take a tiny drop on each one and just kind of let those soak in a little to each drop each little you know dollop of paint and I'm gonna let that sort of activate and kind of come up with oh, that was a little too much I'm gonna set this off to the side now and try not to tip it but now I've got little dips of water in there and now I can move on to stamping grab my misty tool and I'm going to take the nubby side of the cardstock here like that, let's magnet that down, make sure it's right in the corner of the Misty tool. And I think I'll do, well, I'm gonna do all three narwhals because I don't know what I'm going to do in terms of a card design. So getting these guys positioned, making sure there's enough room for using those coordinating dies. Picking this up, again, pushing it back in that corner. And I'm going to ink up with VersaFine which is a watercolor friendly ink. But I'm not gonna get too fancy with this. You know, I could, I could add a little clear powder. Well, actually I could, couldn't I? Then I would kind of create wells. Hmm, now I'm thinking out loud, but let's, let's just go like this and let's just create some narwhals to color. Okay, that is a perfect impression. I don't even think I need to stamp it again, so I'm not going to. And you know, if I were a smart person and wanted to hedge my bets with painting, here's what I would do, and I'm gonna do it real quick. Now, I should have powdered this up at first I, with the embossing magic type powder. I didn't, but here's, here's why this will be nice. When you stamp an image in Versamark and it stays wet for a little bit, or a Versafine, then it's going to kind of dry down a little. Now I'm gonna to have to blow on this because I do have some areas of powder that I don't want there, but it will give me a little ledge. I should have used a little bit of embossing magic or my little rabbit hole powder before I stamped because I can see where that clear powder is kind of sticking. So I've brushed a little away just where some of the powder stuck. And now I'll get my heat tool warmed up.
And now you can see there's a bit of shine and it also creates a little bit of a ledge, which is gonna help me a little bit with painting. So I think I will start with the little belly area and maybe pick up this color. This color looks a little interesting, All right? Just pick that up, swirl my brush around and then I'm going to do his belly. Let's just see what it looks like. Oh my gosh, look at that. Now I'm not the world's best painter. I think, uh, <laughs> let me get a little water to kind of water this out a little. But this is kind of cool to see what this might look like. Now that I wasn't expecting, look at that. Look at me, I even did like a little bit of shadowing on his belly. Well, now I'm feeling like a real boss here. Okay, sorry. Um, I think his tail, I'm also going to keep in this same Oceans 1. It's so interesting because look at how this color looks. And look at how much there is, too. Like, let's make his tail dark, too, right here. Am I even in camera there? <laughs> like that. Okay, so it's a little darker here. And I'm going to get a little more water and just bring it up. To kind of blend it out a little like that so that we do get the shimmer a little darker at the bottom that is not bad Kathy look at that oh see the shimmer okay that's pretty cool now I think I want to repeat some of this in his horn it's not actually called a horn I think it's called oh gosh I used to know what this was called um there's a term it's is it proboscis because it is, it's a tooth. It's not a horn, it's a tooth. And I do know that. But now I have to decide what do I want his body to be? Hmm, well, I'm going to get a larger brush for the body because this is quite a big area. Now here's the thing. Maybe I'll go with Oceans 8 and just see. Pick up some of this right here. And I think I'm going to just test it out here and see. See, that's pretty much the same color. I, I want his body to look a little different. So maybe we'll go in with Oceans 2. See what that looks like. And that's what, mm, hang on. I need clean water and I need to swirl you around. These are just sort of mysterious colors to me. Like I don't know what they will look like until I place them down. That's also very blue. Hmm. And it just seems like it would be purple, but it's not or zero. What about that? Maybe I can take this little friend and I'm gonna bring him like this. Okay. Try to be careful with my paint on up like that and go in there like that then I'm going to pick up some water and sort of draw that out okay sort of then I don't know I don't know if this is going to end up being cute or not cute but where did I which one did I pull out here the ocean's 50 okay Mm -hmm. Putting a little more in there. Just plain. And again, kind of drawing this out here for a little color. So we're we're just creating a nice little shaded, nice little shaded friend. That's actually really cute. Kind of myself but I thought there would be more color variation between these friends I thought it would look different because I do need more color for his horns don't I yeah I think I do so here's the thing I have other little colors but see you can already see the shimmer on that see that well you can see it on the other one but see it in the little friend there that's very cute let me grab another dot card I want to see what this would look like, this kind of green color. Oh yeah, okay. I want to make some variation in his tooth. I don't want it to just all be 
one shade of blue, I want to bring in some different tones to create a little bit of a rainbow. And this one is a green. We'll see what well, says green, but we'll see. What does that look like? Oh, I'm, I'm making the dot kind of go all mushy. Bring this here. Like that. Okay, a little more variation. And I'm gonna bring in a little orange. Oh, look at that, kind of just kind of crumbles in there. I like that. Let's see what that looks like. Maybe a little darker. Okay, a little orange like this. Just wanna see what that looks like too. Oh, that's pretty. Okay. So that way we get a little bit of pink shimmer. I actually wonder if I could use that pink for his cheek. Kind of wet this down again. See if I can get a pink cheek in there. Something that looks a little down. Oh, that's cute. Look at that. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. And I think that's the only one I'm going to do while I work on a background. So for a background, I just kind of want to have a little, a few swirls of the color. And I think I am going to go back to the oceans because I think we'll start down with this dark little color, right? It's sort of blue, kind of getting it a little, getting a little messy. And I'm just going to go like that. I'm going to create my own waves. Now, do I know what I'm doing with my own waves? No, I really don't. But this is experiment time. This is just for fun. And I think what I will do is dry it a little, just a little. I'm gonna pop this right on here. Just do a nice little swirl. A little more there. Look at that. All right. Kind of do this one also. And I am kind of staggering it and I just, you know, I want this to seem kind of oceany. You know, it's so funny. You can't really make out the shine on this, but look at that. That is cool. And I'm going to kind of go this way now. Just kind of go like that. Great. I want it to be a little piecey, and then I just kind of want it to be picking out the last little bit here. Yeah, that color. Okay. Great. Very simple, but it is very shiny. Okay, that's going to be the back. I'm going to go ahead and cut this out off camera using my Gemini Junior and I'll be back. So now I have this perfect little cutout, but look at the shine. You're going to, let's see, how do we, it's so hard to catch it. All right. Very, very, very shimmery little friend. I'm going to stamp a quick little greeting here on some black cardstock. I'm not sure if this is going to look good or not, but you know, sometimes you just got to you just gotta figure it out as you go. And I'm going to powder this up. Let's see. Sometimes I'm not sure I'm getting enough powder out, but I do like this little anti-static powder tool from, oh, there we go, that looks good. Okay, setting that aside. Versamark, boy, my Versamark looks dusty. Okay, 
bring that down. And again, I'll just press with my stamp press tool. Get a nice transfer of ink. Now, let's take a look. Oh yeah, that looks good. And today I'm gonna use a white powder. I haven't used it in a while, but I used to use a ton and I love it. It's the Brutus Monroe Alabaster White. Sprinkle this on. Oh, I don't know if I did a good enough powder job, but I guess we'll see. I hope so. Yeah, mostly. I like to take this uh, angled shader, just get very close to anywhere that you had a little powder that stuck and meaning the embossing powder. Actually, that looks pretty good. All right, you know what? That didn't stamp very well. I think I'm gonna flip it and do it on the other side. I don't know why, but I'm not loving that, so we're gonna redo it. Let's, let's see if this is a little better, and I have plenty of powder on this time. I don't know what happened. I think maybe my Brutus Monroe powder got old. I don't know, let's see. Let's see. Or maybe it's just my cards. I don't know. Well, we'll try it. I'm getting sticky in the same area too. I wonder if that's just pressing too hard. All right, that looks much better. Now, as soon as this is completely cooled off, what I will do, and it doesn't take long, but see how it's very powdery, right? And you're thinking, I've, I've got all this powder. I, I don't wanna have all this powder. Just take a cloth, and I like to keep these e-cloths, and you just yeah, bring back the black, right? Just wipe off the embossing magic, but you'll be so happy that you did because then you get that nice crisp image without any extra powder. So I'm gonna grab the die and cut that out. I was thinking it could be really cute and I've already, I've already got some foam tape on the back here. What if I took an oval? I almost never do anything in an oval, but what if I cropped the lower panel like so half the water feels like it's popping out? You know what I mean? Like just do that. We've got this little bit of, sh and maybe I should go more in that direction so it seems you know like the waters I mean that's kind of cute I think I'm going to tape this down and I'm going to cut this panel and I think I'm going to cut a black layer out to pick up on the black in the outline of the my cute little friend and the black cardstock so let me cut those all out off camera so we can assemble the card. So now I've got my, my two layers here. And again, you've got that shiny, shiny ocean. So let's, uh, I think I'm, no, I'm not out. Maybe I'm, I'm very close to being out. I'm not the greatest at lining these up. So let me see if I can just go from the, well, I think it's more helpful if I go this way. Cause I never know if the, it's hard to do this on a black surface. Oh my goodness, Kathy. Hmm. Well, that's why we have dot runner because that is not perfectly lined up. Come on, you can do it, Kath. I really should have this on a light surface. <laughs> there we go. If you can't see it, at first you can't see, try, try again. That's better, right? Because now you get that nice little edge all the way around. Yeah, that's better. See that? And then I'm going to arrange my little friend right in the center here. So let's get the card base. I'm going to go ahead and score a top folding card. This will be a USA2. So this is half of an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock. We'll fold you down and give you a nice press with my Teflon bone folder. Like that. I've got a little foam tape on the back here. So I'll take that off. Like that. And then I'm just going to pop this let's see here right in the center, right? Just you know, side to side, top to bottom. 
Looks pretty good, right? I think we're straight enough. And press like that. Then we will figure out our positioning of, I like that his little fin can nestle right in with Hello Friend, like that. And also I did make the foam tape a little higher on him. And I have thin foam squares on the back here. Love that I can easily see what I'm doing. We're gonna have him nestled right there. And let's take the foam tape off the back here. This is foam squares. These are foam squares that are the regular depth, not the thin. So we get just a tiny bit of playtime. And in fact, this might be a good opportunity to bring in our liquid adhesive. Just a couple drops here to create sort of that nice hydroplane effect. And we can wiggle him in so he's right like that. To finish off this card, I'm going to bring in some of these waffle flower clear. They're called clearly enough enamel dots. I love these. I completely forgot that I had them. And I think sometimes when I get into the zone of like, I'm just doing sequins or whatever, I forget about them. Now this set does have cute little bubbles that you can stamp, but I just, you know what? I've already, I've already done enough here. So I think what I'll do, where's my, I like to use my craft pick for this. I'll just grab some bubbles to add to, let's see, maybe one there. And, uh, oh, come here now. One there, and let's pick up one more stick. There we go, like that, okay? Get up there, like that. So now we have a few bubbles there at the top. And that's kind of cute. I could put some bubbles at the bottom too. Why not, you know? There's gonna be bubbles. They're jumping out of the water. So I think we'll do five. Five bubbles for the magic number. The re Again, I love this because that is easier to see than my finger. Popping that down. I didn't even boop while I was doing it because it's a different, you know, it's a different quality. But let's take a look at the finished card and wait till you see the shine, which when it's flat, it's so hard to see. But as soon as we begin to, well, there, there you go. Look at that. It just has this gorgeous shimmer to it. And that paint, oh, I just think that's cool. So you get this, you get this cool look like this. And then, of course, you get that beautiful shimmer. So again, just wanted to try out one of the dot cards, or actually, as it were, two of the dot cards, because I did bring in a little bit of extra color. But just, just to show you, look at how much color I used. Like, almost nothing. You know, these little dot cards, they're going to give you a lot of life, and they're going to give you a lot of experimenting and playtime. Hope this inspires you to check out the dot cards and paint some cute little, you know, cute little critters of your own. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you back here with another card project soon. And you can find all of the supplies I used in today's video linked below in the information box. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.